The major purpose for reading includes to learn, to be entertained, or to acquire understanding for something. Then you die, said my psychology teacher way back in university. Being a teacher is an incredible challenge. Above everyday activities in class, teachers are faced with students with different kinds of attitude and characters. <laughs> Meet Franklin Adete, who is a lecturer, a teacher, a school leader, and above all, an author of the book Know Thyself. Know Thyself has been designed to empower teachers, school owners, leaders, students, and others who have the willingness to join the profession. Hello, my name is Franklin Ajete. I'm the principal of British International School and the founder and CEO of Project Know Thyself. Lately, I've become an, an author new in town to the book Know Thyself, which is a creative curriculum for teachers. It talks about the passion and calling of a teacher. Now, why did, why did I write this book? What inspired me to write this book is about my own growing up, my own upbringing. Now, let's hear the story of this great man, Franklin Ajete. I started school when I was around five, six years old. Um, coming from um, the village, I would say, because I grew up with my grandmother and she passed away when I was five years old. Now, when I came to Teba, I had to go into a British curriculum kind of school and I couldn't speak English and nobody did anything about it to support me. They thought they were helping me, but they were not. I was taught like everyone else, but I didn't get it as everyone else. I knew I was different. I failed in class one. I repeated. And now, uh, people made mockery of me, even at home, everywhere. They laughed at me because they didn't understand me. Now, I managed to get through secondary school. By the time I got to uh, A-level, things were really hard. I read physics, chemistry, biology because everyone um, made me understand that physics, chemistry, biology are the subjects that if you are intelligent, if you are academic, you are strong in knowledge, you, you, you choose and do, you know, so you have to become a doctor or you must become an engineer or maybe an architect, something. So we all train to become doctors, architects, or a lawyer, you know. And so I wanted to be one of them. I didn't know what I wanted to become. I just wanted to be one of them to please the world and to please my family. But then who, who am I? What am I good at? What do I want to do? That was concealed in me. So I failed my A-levels, physics, chemistry, biology. I did it the first time I failed. I did it the second time, I failed. And I did it the third time, I failed. So that's when the challenge started for me in life. And I thought I was gonna be useless because I can't go to university. Everybody I know, all the young people I know, my age mates, 
have managed to get into university and they keep asking me questions. What are you doing from here? And now, um, I took a job in a school called Marine Preparatory School in Tamil. And the head teacher, um, and one of the school, Mrs. Bro Adrian, asked me questions. What are you doing with your life, young man? And I said, oh, I'm going to work here as a teacher. And she said, no, 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 you must go to university. I said, madam, I can't go to university because I didn't pass my A-levels. He said, then you have to do it again. And I felt, do it again? How? I can't go to my dad and ask him for money again. Like, I feel so bad. I said, but you can pay with the money I pay you. I'm like, oh, my salary. I didn't even know that this is what I can use my salary for. I spoke to a friend and he said, what are you very good at? Look back at your old level results. And when I look back, it was art. So I decided to pursue art A level. And trust me, within six months, I got a B in art. With just a pass in biology, a general paper, I was able to apply to the University of Science and Technology, now known as Kwame Krumah, and University of Science and Technology, to study art. Even when I got to the university, I realized that art is life, and life is art, and there is mathematics in art, there's English in art, there's science in art, there's technology in art, like everything is art. So that gave me the confidence to, to accept myself and accept what I'm good at, that I'm not going to be useless. I can use and apply my art to do different things. So I settled to learn and I excelled for my first degree. I got a second class upper. So I decided to go to the United Kingdom to study, um, to do MBA um, international business. At that point, I still was not sure. But when I went to study MBA international business, I've never done economics into details, accounting into details, that business wasn't my line, it was physics, chemistry, biology and art. But you see, because I was passionate about it and I, I learned how to learn, that once I make, my, I make up my mind that I want to do something, I must give it a time, I must give it a trial, I must have a positive mind and I must give it my all, I must leave no stone on time. That's how I passed my MBA. One year I passed it and I was so proud of myself that the young man who thought was going to be useless, who thought was a failure, has today got a master's in international business from the United Kingdom. When I finished, I had about six months, seven months to graduate and I come back to Ghana. And I, I got myself a job in a shop, you know, because I needed to make some small money for myself. I, I don't like depending on people. So, as I was working in the shop, I bumped into one of my schoolmates who said to me, why are you working in the shop? You could teach, you know, because teaching is kind of noble and it's worth it and you are well paid in the UK. And I, I said to myself, no, I know teaching is a noble job, but um, mm -mm. I don't know how much I'm going to get from teaching. Like, what's the future in teaching? No, I think I, besides I don't have a degree in education, so no. Nah. And he said, no, they pay about 120 pounds a day, and I was like, really? Okay, then let me try. So you see, I didn't go into teaching because I felt like I had a passion to teach, okay? Or I had a calling. I went into teaching because I felt like, okay, supply teaching, I'll make some money. So I got into class the first time in Peckham, and Peckham is a kind of rough area. I got into class and I said, hello children, my name is Franklin. I'm from Ghana. You see, you need to try to be proud of your background to be proud of who you are. Never try to become like someone else. I made it clear to them, I'm from Ghana, I have a Ghanaian accent. If they don't understand me, they can ask me to repeat myself or explain. And my background is Nazi stories. My background is che che kule, che che kofisa, you know, p, c, uh, c, 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 nanako. That's my background, that's what we learned from the growing up. My background is storytelling. My background is drumming. My background is dancing. You know, our culture is very strong as Ghanaians. And I took that with me into the classroom. Because I felt that's where I'm going to excel. Then with my art, I thought, let me latch on my art. You always need to latch on your strength. So when I latch on my art, I said to the children, I'm going to tell you a story. 
A story about an old wicked witch who will be long flabby ears. When it touches the ground, it makes the noise. Putimpa, e putimpa, e putimpa, ta, putimpa. And that's drumming. So when I did the drumming sound, they were so excited and they were gazing at me and they were listening to me. And I was telling the story and at a certain point I'll stop and ask them questions. At a certain point I'll stop and tell them to clap what I sing and tell them to how to respond to some of my chanting, my songs, and you know, within the choral chanting here and there. And they were so engaged. And then I asked them to draw in three stages the story that I've told them. And then write their story, what they've drawn, what they think is happening in them. So the children were engaged the whole day. There were no problems. I wasn't expecting any problem anyway. Because in Ghana, the children at that time don't really misbehave in class, you know. They're not that rude. But not only I've taken up a class that um, was very rough and really challenging behavior. And every supply teacher that came in, uh, uh, came in would, would probably by 10 o'clock take me about the left because they can't handle the children. I didn't have any problems with the children to the end of the day. And the head mistress at the time called me and asked me to come inside my type sheet. And she said to me, um, why are you still in the classroom? And I said, oh, well, I'm marking the children's work and tidying up the class because I thought that's what I should do as a teacher. And she smiled and said, oh, for a supply teacher, that's a bit too much. Well done. Would you want to be a teacher? And honestly speaking, I lied. I said yes, because I wanted a job. But I didn't want to be a teacher because I felt like, you know, I've been given the impression right from when I was growing up that being a doctor, being a lawyer, being an engineer is one of the best industries that you're intended in. I didn't want to be seen as useless. And I don't want to teach. Nobody has made that teaching profession a, a, a noble and, and great profession for me to, to want to get into it. I felt like it was only failures, those who come past their A level or come going to secondary school, go to teacher training and then become teachers. That's what I know. So I said I would like to be a teacher, not because I wanted to be a teacher, but because I wanted to carry on getting the money, okay? And then um, the headmistress asked me to come to her office to interview me, and I panicked. That within my internal dialogue in my head, because I've read certain books about the power of positive thinking and positive affirmations, I said things to myself in my internal dialogue that, hey, Franklin, you can do it. Listen to her carefully. Sit upright and answer the questions. Make sure your answering of your questions, you target it or you channel it through your strength. So she asked me, why do I want to be a teacher? And I said, oh, I want to be a teacher because when I was growing up, I really struggled with my learning. And I don't think my teachers knew how best to teach me, how best I learn. So I failed several times. I'm talented when it comes to art, dance, music, uh, um, drumming, you know. And then she said to me, oh, that's what we're looking for. When can you start? I said, as soon as possible. She said, come tomorrow. And that's how I got my first teaching appointment, you know. And through that, I came to explore the importance of a teacher. I came to explore the best way to teach. I came to understand how children learn. And I came to see that there's more to teaching than we know. And that's where my journey began. I really explored a lot at the school. And um, reading the curriculum and going on trainings and learning how children learn and realizing that um, I play a significant role in nurturing young people's lives and thinking to become who they want to be. Knowing who you are is so essential at this point 
for every teacher because you are teaching these children to know who they are, to know their strengths and their weaknesses so they can latch on their strengths to become who they want to be. In fact, that is where I knew that the teaching profession demands passion. Coming into teaching with my talent, with my art, with the music, my dance, my drumming, how I use my talent, how I latch on my talent to teach mathematics, how I latch on my talent to teach English, how I approach geography and history and the other subjects with my understanding of the progression in the curriculum and how children learn and the pedagogies surrounding teaching, it just made my teaching life very interesting. And all the children found my teaching interesting. They found the learning interesting. They always wanted to be in my class. They always wanted to come to school. Before I knew it, I was one of the outstanding teachers at school during observations. And that's where I was put in year six. You know, in London, year six is a very, like, is the pinnacle of primary. The children must do well before they get to secondary. And if they don't do well, the head teacher is in trouble. So I was given a year six class. And in year six, in this year six class, we have children who operate at the level of year two. Some year three, some year four, some five, some are six. So some, what it means is some children are not on track. And actually, majority of them were not on track. So what do I do? They all have to pass anyway. They all must pass and pass well. How do I do this dramatic teaching, dramatic transformation and turn around if my teaching is not interesting? It got me thinking. I read a book. The title of the book is A Child Called It. And this book talks about a child who was abused by his own parents, especially his mother. It was written by Dave Pelzer. And if you read the book and see how this child was abused um, and how he struggled through social services, um, the challenges he went through, and, and the, his background, which is a spiral of poverty, and becoming a successful author made me think. In fact, the book is so emotional. And I was emotionally gripped. And it sparked my emotional literacy. So I decided to share it with the children in my class, the ESC's class. I shared, it, I shared the story. They found it very emotional. Some broke into tears. I shared my story growing up as well. Sometimes we don't share our stories with the children, with our own children. And even as teachers, with the children we teach. They need to know about life. So I told them about my life, growing up, my challenges, my struggles with my mom, and my struggles with my learning. Um, when I went to do my national service, I went to Boku. I had nobody there that I knew. It was a struggle. Sometimes we were not paid. And all the things I was denied of water, electricity, I had to learn the hard way. And they looked at me and they said, wow, sir, and you're here today. And I said, yes. And I'm here today. You don't know the opportunity you have. You need to appreciate life. You need to know that if I can be who I am today, you can be who you want to be tomorrow too. And that's where this student gained this confidence and came back to me the following day and said, Sir, we need to put up a show. We need to do a show. And I was like, what kind of show are you talking about? They said, Sir, let's have a showcase to create awareness that you can be what do you want to be? You can be who you want to be. Nobody but you can stop you. And I was like, whoa, is this coming from my children? Okay, then we're going to put up a show, showcase. So I have to quickly think. I had to quickly think. I thought about how I'm going to do this. They've got exams to write and they want to do this showcase. How do I get them to learn through the showcase? So I, I'm killing two or three birds with one stone. Creativity comes in there. So I said to the children, let's write a letter to the head teacher. And I gave them the freedom to write their own letter, to work in groups, 
to discuss and put it together. And they wrote the best letter ever in the class when they worked together. And I saw the power of collaborative and the power of, you know, group work. So for, through that, we decided to plan the curriculum ourselves. That, okay, in the middle will be know thyself. And from know thyself, we'll, this is what we're going to do in English. We're going to write letters. We're going to write poetry. We are going to write play scripts. All the genres of English. We will need to learn this and learn that and learn that before we can write. We are going to calculate um, how much we're going to charge and um, the percentage of how much money we could get estimated and, and see the fraction of what we're going to donate or the percentage of what we're going to donate to charity, what we're going to use for a class party, what we're going to donate to the school. So that's where the maths came in. Then we looked at history, that we need to know who we are, where we are from. As we're doing that, I didn't forget to look at the skills within the curriculum, which is statutory. And I was just a facilitator and a guide to the students who did the learning themselves, and they really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the process, because I brought in my authenticity as well. At the Incra Symbols, I talked to them about the Incra Symbols. I talked to them about the history of Ghana. What are the Incra Symbols mean to us? And each of them selected a symbol and related to what it will mean or mean to them. And we drew our symbols and we, we, we wrote about it and we discussed it. It was so interesting, we became like a family. And that's when the children came to the realization that, oh, they've got exams ahead of them. I didn't tell them. Just sir, I'm weak when it comes to this area in mathematics. I'm weak when it comes to this. The, pros, the, the, the whole process of the program or the project brought to the children realization of their weaknesses and their strengths. And they directed me how to teach them, what to do. So I gave them extra tuition, supported them, and you know, to cut a long story short, the children came out to be the best cohort ever in the school. That the school's SAT results rose from 35% to almost 80%, unprecedented. The head teacher was amazed. She was excited. To ask myself the question, and that question is the question. If I was taught this way back at school, primary and secondary, I don't think I would have struggled that much. I wouldn't have wasted almost four years of my life struggling, going through processes that were not really important. And that's how I bet the project Know Thyself. We're looking at the hidden curriculum, the behaviors and attitudes that are expected in society, which are taught in schools, but not examinable. Who can give me an example? Actually, take your green pens and write one or two examples of the hidden curriculum. But hold on a minute. Um, when I got to Nigeria, I realized that Africa is tired of being tired. The youth are tired of being tired. They are tired of failures, um, being failed by leaders, corruption taking over the society. Um, there are so many young people that have come out of university and are looking for jobs and cannot find jobs even though jobs are available because they've put or teachers or parents have put square pegs in round holes, round pegs in square holes. So they've chosen to study courses at the universities that they don't have any passion, they don't have any talent, they don't even know how they're going to work with it. All they want to do is work and make some money. So that's where 
we are at the moment. And that's why I feel it's important that every teacher, everybody that wants to be a teacher, and all parents should understand that it is important for children to know who they are. It is important for children to be taught to learn about finding themselves, holding a positive mindset, growth mindset, with positive affirmations and hard work, all the soft skills to become who they want to be. And this is why it's important that schools see that they have a significant role to play, to look into their curriculum and bring in all this hidden curriculum. That's important to help the child or the learner learn how to learn and learn with passion and understand what their role could be in future. In fact, some parents and some teachers will ask children, um, what do you want to be in future? Who do you want to become in future? But I kind of see that question not to be a wise one because everybody's got their own developmental pathway. And as you grow, as you learn, things change for you. You begin to discover. The most important thing is to be taught how to be creative, how to be innovative, and, and how to collaborate, how to research the importance of finding similarities and differences, creating things, and that would help you to fit into this 21st century. Things have changed. Technology has taken over. And so many jobs that existed before don't exist anymore. So what do we do? This is why it's important that all teachers know who they are and know how to teach children or learners to, to discover themselves, to discover who they are and be who they want to be to become true servant leaders for tomorrow. Thank you. challenges I faced in my learning growing up and the challenges of young people today inspired me to start this project Know Thyself um, in my school in London and when I took up the job as a principal of Pharmax International School in Nigeria I took it with me as a curriculum and I, I would like to say a big thank you to the owner of the school who gave me the opportunity to actually implement this project. Um, education is meant to solve societal issues. And if we've, say, we've educated children or we've educated learners and they are not able to solve issues even for themselves, then what have we done and what do we call that? It is very important that teachers, all teachers understand this that when they come into teaching, they come with their passion. It is important. You don't have to be passionate to come into teaching. But when you come into teaching, you've got to be passionate. Just like whatever you intend to do, you've got to be passionate about. Give it your all. And when you give it your all, then you will begin to follow that quest of inquiry, finding out the best ways that children learn, the best ways to teach them, how teaching and learning has evolved, the pedagogy, the excitement to bring it to teaching so that all three, every individual can be who they want to be. And this is why I thought it's important for me to capture it, because it was all over the place, to capture it into a book so people can read it and understand me, why um, I'm talking about this project, um, Know Thyself. The book is hidden here. Project Know Thyself book is a creative curriculum and it talks about the passion and calling of a teacher. 
I can read a bit of the blurb that talks about how passion ignites creativity, innovation, and self-development in inquiry and reflective mind. Very important book. Every teacher, every trainee teacher, every school owner, every parent would need to read this book to understand their child, to even understand how Abraham Lincoln felt about his own son and the letter he wrote to his son's teacher when his son has to start school. You will feel how important that child, that particular that child is to the parent. And that is why we as teachers need to bring in that passion. We need to bring in that wealth of knowledge, our talent, everything we have in totality, into education. And with that drive, every child would excel at their own pace and develop in their own pathway. There are different strategies in supporting students. And it's all hidden in this book. This book can be a novel for you. It can be a textbook because it details my journey, you know, from when I started um, learning as a child, when I came to self-actualization, and when I went into teaching, and my teaching career path, and what I've encountered, what I've discovered, all the interesting things that are my findings, that are peculiar and authentic to me, and the teachers I worked with and the schools I worked in, so you understand the importance of passion and calling for a teacher in education. Ghana today has a bright future when it comes to education, especially with our Minister of Education's background and wealth of knowledge. You know, I've seen um, the new curriculum and what have been put together. And the most important thing is for teachers to bring in that passion. If teachers can be trained or retrained to bring in that passion, to unlearn and learn how to learn, um, it will make a big difference. And also, if we have systems in place that tracks learning and tracks teaching and all the artifacts that will bring consistency across the schools so that that system is in place to track assessment, to track how teachers teach, to look at their weaknesses and strengths and how to build on their strengths to help them with their weaknesses so that they, become, they learn how to become outstanding teachers. Every school knows what outstanding teaching looks like. Every school knows what bad teaching looks like. So that they, there's a system in place that helps them to monitor teaching and learning. I think that we'll have a fantastic educational system in the future, especially when I was listening to the news and they're talking about these STEM academies. It's going to be amazing, you know, because children are not going to just go into school and learn like how they used to learn um, years back, or be taught like how they used to learn years back, but this time we are bringing in technology, we are bringing in creativity, innovative, and um, um, how to work in groups. This will make learning interesting, and you know, um, children are going to help are going to be helped to tap into their innate potential and be who they want to be. And th this is why they will need this book. My advice to young teachers or training teachers is, it doesn't matter if you were forced to choose teaching. It doesn't matter if you find yourself in teaching because you were not doing really well, couldn't get to university, so you chose to go and teach to make some money because that's the easy way out. What matters is just develop the passion. Put yourself into it. Give it all your best. The soft skills, meeting deadlines, coming to school on time, reading a lot. Reading is one key thing. It's so important because it opens up your mind. And there's so many things you can do as an educator. Sometimes we think that, oh, if the money is not enough, then probably we have to go and sell some things, clothes or something. But you can still work around education. You can write books. You can write poetry. You can get into acting, you can get into motivational speaking. To build the future, to build or empower young people, it's really, really important that this profession is a noble one. I've never regretted it, and I, I am making money. Don't think that you cannot make money. I am making money. Me in Kenya, fair, Ninya Nuaka, she teaching her, it's very, very important. It's a noble profession. Can Hani Mokohano feel like she? as a teacher, because both money, 
wuni ma usua na wo bisa questions na wo hwe mu se de ye marking se de child ya e exciting se resources ni ho crampo enye de bia na government no ana obi beta ma o wo hwe box where wo hwe eh eh object where e beti mi achira de na wo dia ba classroom o wa require e ti mi chere mat perfume box kwa e wo hia kra wo ti mi de chere shapes clock kra i say a e wo hia e tell the right time twice in a day it wo ti mi de chere time it's in the name of the bureau of war. You bet me the aye bibi. Now you ain't trying to say, oh man, the government in the better time my yen. You say, yeah, yeah, boy, yeah, 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 bibi. It's in a mature book way. It was so kind book way. We a teacher. Who pursue your teacher? And no person will be a schooler to book way in a kind. A bebo, a pa, a ba, a wabo. Yeah, you're a don. dedicated to um, my father, Right Honorable um, Peter Ala Ajete. Um, he was the Speaker of Parliament for the Fourth Republic. And um, also to my dearest mother, um, Madam Victoria Nikwe, and my dearest wife and children, all the teachers who helped in bringing this book alive, and to all the parents and the schools that supported me, and to all the teachers and children who will be reading this book. The book can be obtained on Amazon. Okay, so you can get this book to buy on Amazon. There's Kindle and there's paperback. The luncheon will be on the 5th of March at 2 p.m. and it will be in abundance and you can grab your copy. Then afterwards, it will be in the bookshops. If you want to reach me for further discussion on this matter of education or my book, you can reach me at PKTS.org, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or on my website, www.pktsinternational.org. Mm -hmm.